you ready? Ready to take a ride? Grab your coffee and strap yourself in. If you listen, I can hear God's plan. Because the show is about to begin. You're listening, you're listening to the Omega Man Radio Network. All right, everybody, that time is here. Wednesday, January 7th, 2024. I'm excited to be back with Brother Doug Perry coming to you from Liberty, Missouri, Fellowship of the Martyrs.com. Hey, Doug, I just did a program with our friend Michael Basham, and I said, uh, I've got to connect you with Doug Perry. Now, Michael does several podcasts, he's uh, very well connected in the podcast world. And he was talking about uh, some things tonight that reminded me of a conversation you and I had in a previous show about how God put it on your heart to uh, find another way to communicate with ministries should the grid go down, you know, a.k.a. the the tower system that you're building. And uh, you all have got to talk. So if it's okay, I want to give Michael your phone number and try to get you all together and have him bring you on his show. And, um, for sure okay with that then I'll make it happen uh, a kindred brother in the Lord and um, yeah he's he's right on on the same sheet we are definitely well folks welcome Doug you want to open us in prayer absolutely Lord God Almighty, I thank you so much for this time. We ask again that you'd be fully in charge, you'd accomplish your purposes, that would speak your words, that if anything is said that would hurt the bride somehow, that it would fall to the ground harmless, that the enemy wouldn't use it, that it would just be scrubbed out of memory. We understand our responsibility to lead well, to teach correctly, to guide, to share the real experiences that we've had with you and the the burden uh, on us to do that well. We thank you and we praise your holy name. We thank you for this time. ask that you just be present here amongst your people in a very real way, that you get all the right people to listen to this that need to hear it either now or later pray all this to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach Amen Amen Doug we've got the next 50 minutes together we'll go right now the mic is yours well I always pray uh, don't let me hurt the bride he's waited a long time and I think there have been a lot of misfires. Uh, you know, it says that nobody knows the day or the hour, even the sun. And uh, I've had arguments with people about this that say, oh, well, Jesus is in heaven now. He knows. And one of the one of the elders here held to that until the Lord had him read in Revelation. And it says that the father tells him the angel to go tell Jesus that it's time. And... Uh, as I study church history, I can understand how it, Paul thought it's not going to be long now. He's going to be back soon. And that even Jesus felt like it shouldn't take very long. And I can see evidence where Jesus goes to the Father and says, Hey, how about, uh, how about the Moravians? Can I go? Can they be the bride? Can I go woo them? And they can reach the world and this can be it. And Father says, yeah, you know what? Go give it a try. And he pours out his spirit and he, he, he fills them and they start a prayer meeting that lasts 100 years, 24-7, and the greatest evangelism push the world's ever seen. And then they spin out into a denomination and fizzle. And uh, Jesus is disappointed because he wanted to go get his bride and bring her for the marriage feast and he says, well, how about, uh, how about the Quakers? That George Fox guy, he's pretty crazy, wearing a leather suit and going around and saying, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know what the Bible says, and I know what you say, but what does Jesus say? 
believing everybody has a spark of divinity inside them and ought to be hearing God and raises up the Quakers who just sit under the power of God and shake because he's so present. And they spin up into a denomination after George Fox dies, and now they're the tree hugginest, Greenpeace lovingest bunch around. And then, uh, how about the Salvation Army? Yeah, go try them. And they change the world for a while, and then they fizzle out. And one after the other after the other, I think he has to learn how um, a, a self willed build a house with their own hands, Jezebelly Bride is like to have around. And uh, I've, uh, you and I have experienced uh, what it's like to be with somebody that ends up not being who they said they were and turning into something else and having to cut bait and try and re reconstruct everything afterwards. And uh, I want this to be the one. I want him to come and get her, and I want this to be over and him to have his marriage feast and him to be happy and, and get the reward of his suffering. And I don't want to do anything uh, to hurt her. I have this... Uh, I, I believe that revival is coming to Kansas City and the people are going to be coming from all over to learn how to get closer to God and hear him better and hold his hand. And and I have this idea that someday we're going to have this big tent revival and heads of major ministries that we've seen on TV are going to come and want to get up in the pulpit and share their stick. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to have a big copper handle right next to the pulpit with a big wire run into a lightning rod on the roof. And before you get up in the pulpit and open your mouth, you say, so help me God. Would he kill me if I say anything would hurt the bride and then spit on your hand and grab a hold of that handle. Cause we're not <laughs> listening to you. If you don't have that kind of fear of the Lord. And if it's raining, we'll listen real hard. <laughs> you'll, you'll get our full attention. Amen. But man, I, I don't think anybody ought to be getting up behind a microphone in front of God's people if they're not scared to death of what they might say, that's going to do them harm. And, uh, anyway, so I, I try to speak slowly and speak carefully and, and stick to the stuff that I know and not, uh, not try to regurgitate religion or, or, uh, something I learned in Bible college or picked up along the way, but just the things that I know that the Lord taught me. And, uh, uh, so, Back in 2004, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, had a vision of how bad things are. The Holy Spirit flipped me upside down and shook real hard and all the Baptists fell out. And uh, I started hearing him. And one of the very first things he said is, we've got to have a communication system that can endure tribulation. Uh, I know that um, the underground church in China and other places couldn't survive without encrypted cell phones. Uh, but even then, they have to have code um, when they're talking to one another. So they don't say Lord. They don't say God. They'll ask how your dad is or if your father told you to do this or that. Or They just got all kinds of language to, to hide from the communist Chinese uh, when they're under severe persecution. And uh, the same in Iran and other countries where the gospel is growing like crazy and of course, nobody's talking about it. The news isn't talking about it. But there's a tremendous revival happening in, Ira in Iran right now. Um, anyway, um, as I'm as I'm talking to the Lord about, you know, what 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 is there that can endure a tribulation? Well, the first thing you do in a war is block communication. When we went into the first desert storm. The first thing you do is is uh, send the stealth fighters in and knock out all of the cell towers and all of the broadcast towers and whatever. And then the tanks can't hear headquarters and they just they just give up. They wander around you know in circles until they just give up. And uh, so one of the first things you got to do um, after you've censored everybody and blocked whoever you can is just shut down landlines, the internet, whatever it takes to isolate people so that you can then roll the tanks in and nobody sees it coming or whatever. And uh, so what do we have uh, 
uh, in America, for example, that could endure tribulation. Whether well, there's ham radios, which you have to be licensed for, and hardly anybody has. There was CB radios, which worked pretty good, and you could put up an antenna and broadcast hundreds of miles away. Except nobody uses those anymore, even in trucks, hardly. Um, then we've got shortwave, which hardly anybody has or knows how to work. We've got landlines, we've got cell phones, and uh, we've got Wi-Fi. And everybody is carrying a Wi-Fi transmitter receiver with them everywhere they go anymore. And most phones are set so that even if the cell towers were all down, you could go to McDonald's, get on the Wi-Fi, and if they have a connection, you could get on the Internet from there. So you could send a text message uh, on most phones, even if you take the SIM card out of your phone. Any, then there's Wi-Fi devices that do nothing but uh, a kind of a text message thing through the Internet without access in cell towers or, or uh, even having a, a MAC address, an identifier. So, uh, question? I'm thinking. I think this, so is, one this of the, is smart. Keep going. I love where yeah. you're going. Well, uh, one of the... Uh, uh, because what the Lord has been talking to us about all along is when I I realized the Baptists were leaving stuff out like the gifts of the Spirit and Acts and First Corinthians 12 and a bunch of stuff I said okay Lord you teach me because I know the Episcopalians are messed up I know the Methodists are messed up I know the Catholics are messed up you know I, I know that I know uh, I've got uh, my degree is in religion it's not even ministry it's just religion I've had to disavow practically everything I learned <laughs> and uh, but I know everybody's whacked somehow and so I said okay Lord you teach me the Holy Spirit is supposed to bring all things to our remembrance you're supposed to be our teacher so you teach me what what is church well the only thing you can find in the Bible is the global universal church that is the bride that is everybody me the church not the the building not built with human hands that that, that is a temple of God and the city church uh, Church of Ephesus, Church of Smyrna, Church of Laodicea, one body per city under Christ, local elders, local autonomy, local direction. They don't report to a pope. They don't report to some headquarters somewhere else. When Paul, uh, as an apostle, is coming through town, he's got to meet with the elders in Ephesus and convince them to raise money to send to Jerusalem. He doesn't get to tell them what to do. He's not an autocrat. Uh, even if he is their spiritual father, they still are an autonomous uh, body of believers and he needs to uh, work it out with the elders that are uh, obvious. They're not appointed, and they're not hired. They're not hirelings. They're not the guy with the seminary degree. They're whoever's elder than everybody else. To be an elder, you just have to be a four-year-old in a room full of three-year-olds. And uh, so I think when Paul um, uh, went into Ephesus, preached the gospel to some guys down by the river, preached for a while, sons of Sceva, get their rear ends kicked, then the name of Jesus is held in high regard. Paul leaves for a couple of years, comes back, and appoints the elders, which is really just a matter of saying, okay, who do you think cares the most to make sure the widows get fed? That guy. Okay, he's a pastor. He's a deacon, a shepherd. He makes sure they get to the water, get home safely, get to the food, whatever. That's what pastors are supposed to do. They're, they're the deacons equivalent, Stephen and Philip. Uh, who do you think is the most prophetic? Well, that guy. Okay. Uh, who do you think is, uh, you know, uh, the best teacher? Well, that guy. And it's self-evident. It's a it's a capitalist market forces. I, I really believe, you know, you build a better mousetrap, uh, you can show everybody that you're a little little ahead of they are. So, uh, anyway, uh, if things hit the fan, when things hit the fan, uh, community is what matters. It's not going to matter what the church is doing in Boston or L.A. or Philadelphia or somewhere else. What matters is right here in your neighborhood, in your township, wherever you are, how, how can the body of Christ be working together and reaching the lost right there? Because foreign missions won't matter anymore. We're not going to be shipping people all over the world. We're going to be dealing with the people right here in our neighborhood who might be trying to take all of our stuff away from us and kill us but still need the gospel. And so – uh, I feel like the church was supposed to lead the world 
in community and unity and caring for one another, sharing with each as they had a need, and we have done the exact opposite. We open a new denomination every 48 hours. We've got four big mega churches on four corners of the same intersection not talking to each other. We have not impressed the world with our unity and with our care for one another, much less our care for them. And uh, that's got to change because that's the foundation. And if we're going to restore the church, it's got to get back to its original foundation. It's got to be, get. It's like a computer that you've left running forever and ever and ever on the internet, and it's got all kind of anti antiviruses. It's got all kinds of porn's been downloaded, all kinds of stuff that's corrupt in the hard drive. And we've got to reset it back to the defaults, scrub everything off except the original programming, and get rid of all the greasy fingerprints of the world and of Satan that have accumulated over the years. And mostly people don't want to do that. Um, people want to uh, improve the church. Like, well, let's do let's do mega churches and better child care and and let's do PowerPoint presentations on the wall and that'll bring them back. Or or let's do home home groups. Uh, and sell churches, organic church, or some other thing, and and that'll bring them back. Uh, and I'm like, no, we got to get back to love, and we got to get back to community. And it doesn't mean we all live together in the same house. It doesn't mean that it's a common purse, and the apostles decide how much money everybody should have. Uh, but we're supposed to manifest our oneness to the world, and we're supposed to impress them with our love. And that's pretty much not happening much of anywhere. And um, that's what we have to get back to. And so uh, back 15 years ago, he started talking to me about what it would look like. And he said, I want you to build a computer system that takes everything the Internet can do and point it at the local community. And we've had a lot of time to hash out this vision. And I've had a dozen or so people that were perfectly qualified to build it. One of them was the Internet czar for Cleveland and flipped out. The warfare was so great before he could even get here and never even made it to start helping with it. Another guy was a, a IT professional that made six figures that was great and was sent here to build it. And, and the warfare was so so much he could never get it off the ground. God later took his family away from him and then took his faith away from him because he didn't do what God told him to do. But um, that's another story. Uh, anyway, uh, finally, a couple years ago, we had a couple of young men that were here that had enough uh, skill to at least build something that's just a beta test, a sandbox of what it might look like. But uh, imagine if you took local news, sports, weather, coupons, uh, Craigslist, Yelp, Angie's List, everything, kind of the component pieces – that we use that are kind of global and focused it on the local community. I think what people are starving for, not just the Christians, but everybody is starving for is Mayberry. Is that, is that Andy Griffith kind of move into town and the neighbors bring you a pie, go to the barbershop and talk about what's going on in town. Everybody can leave their doors unlocked and knows one another and there's accountability and, and all of that kind of stuff, a sweetness and a love for one another that the internet has demolished. Um, people are, uh, go from their connected job to their connected home game with guys in Ukraine that they're never going to meet and could never hug and, uh, you know, go to sleep and do it all over again, never knowing their neighbors, um, never being connected even with a, with a church necessarily. Um, they just get fed through the internet or whatever. And, uh, especially COVID really taught us how, uh, how much that can be done digitally. Anyway, so imagine if we took it, all of those component pieces, you have uh, your friends list on there, you can see who's online, you can do video chat, um, there's local business reviews and articles and coupons and everything you can think of for your local community, and one click away is the local church, where the body can come together. Uh, like, if, if you... I, I don't imagine where you are now, Shannon, is quite as multicultural as New York or Detroit or some of the <laughs> some of the issues here in, in the United States we have to deal with where the public school system has to have 100 translators 
including Klingon, just to talk to everybody. Absolutely. But, not. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, how, how would you, if you got all the Christians in Detroit together, where would you do it? At, at a football stadium? Maybe, maybe you could fit them all, but that would just be mega, mega, mega church. And you're even more impersonal and more a number, less likely to have community and to know one another. And, uh, and then what language do you do it in? What songs does everybody know? Uh, Jesus loves me in, in in twenty languages all at once. I, I mean, and and then who are the elders? You can't assume the white guys or the guys with the biggest churches are the elders. Maybe the Chinese pastor hears God the best, and uh, that's 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 not that's not what city church is. Getting together two three times a year with everybody in town, it's manifesting daily and from house to house. And so how could you do that? Well, you could do it digitally. You could run it through translators. So you can hear the, the Chinese pastor's sermon with subtitles in English. You could you could hear the Somali choir sing, and you could discuss between you uh, questions of theology. You could you know PayPal here if you want to help get girls out of prostitution. PayPal here if you want to help the food pantry. If you want to go on the Africa trip, contact Pastor So and So or whatever. And the body of Christ could come together digitally daily from house to house, even in a multicultural kind of scenario like that. And certainly there'd be some of them that would choose not to, that, that, uh, that would rather argue or would rather be right. You know, I don't, I don't, I understand that there's a human desire to kind of hang with the people that are like you, that understand you, maybe you're the same color as you, but we've still got to manifest to the world that we're one. And I don't really care what box they're in on Sunday morning. Uh, if the whole rest of the week they understand that we're one, whether they like it or not, you know, whether you agree with me or not, the last dying wish of our Savior before he went to the cross in John 17, he prayed for us and said, let them be right as I and the Father are right. Oh, wait, no, that's not right. That It was uh, let them be one. Yeah, that's it. Let them be one as I and the Father are one. And we're about as far from one as you can get. And there's no mechanism for this system that we've built to ever get us back to one. I, I've, I've been to the ministerial association in my town. We have 60 congregations in this 30,000 person town. And like seven of the pastors go to the ministerial association meetings. We've got at least five of the pastors think that their denomination is the only ones going to heaven. So why do they need to fellowship with anybody of the six pastors that come to the ministerial association meetings? One of them's a Mormon and one of them is the Community of Christ, which is reorganized Church of Latter-day Saints, <laughs> you know. And and uh, anyway, they they got entirely the wrong Jesus. Uh, nothing personal. People ask me if I think the Mormons are going to heaven, and I say, well, yeah, some of them. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what? They got a nursery. I got some responsibility for uh, the eternity I'm going to spend with the little kids in the nursery. Don't know any better. Can't can't tell their right left right from their left from their right and can't tie their shoes and whatever. Maybe some of them just heard the name of Jesus and fell in love and forgot the whole golden tablet nonsense, you know? Uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, Doug, um, let me inject here. I think what you're doing is by divine appointment because all of us have been relegated to using a handful of social media platforms. Look at how many operating systems are for computers, like three options. And we know the level of censorship that we've got now. But wait till it goes up another tick, and again, these dark forces come out openly and make it known that they're against every Christian and Jew, and they want to shut down us because yeah. of us standing for the Bible and Jesus, and we begin to get kicked off these networks, or we become like the underground church having to meet through other venues, because to meet above ground can get you arrested what ability do we have to, to communicate I like where God is leading you let me just inject something here I think Wi-Fi is the key do um, you remember the old Bolton board systems back in the day the BBS's yeah so you know I'm of that generation I was young about 15 when I started work, playing around with Bolton <laughs> boards in 85 or so dial up modem 300 baud you're calling a landline number usually one person at a time on someone's computer. You log in, check your messages, grab your files, 
post, message, whatever. And then you're off and someone else gets in there. That technology is even still available. Yep. Now, what's interesting is just uh, two weeks ago, uh, I had AT&T install a landline at my mom's house. That's for another reason we're going to here. But suffice to say, this thing is so old that, uh, you know, almost no one's asking for landlines anymore. They said, you want to do VOIP? I said, no, just an old landline. Well, thankfully, they still have them. Uh, For how long, I don't know. You don't see pay telephones anymore. But my point is, there's still some older technology that we could rejuvenate. But I don't even think the BBS idea, although you could resurrect those, you could have a node at each of these centers, as long as you had a landline, I don't think that's as good as uh, Wi-Fi, because with Wi-Fi, you can still operate uh, programs and not be using your uh, SIM card, correct? You put it on airplane mode? Right. Or you turn yeah, off the yeah, cell phone? Yeah, you can. You can, take the, you can take the SIM card out of the phone and still use Wi-Fi. Right. And you yeah. can send messages to anybody else worldwide on the Wi-Fi networks, right? So yeah. my question is... And there are uh, other devices... There are other devices that are just specific that aren't smartphones, that that aren't that aren't trackable, traceable, whatever. That can get you on Wi-Fi just to communicate. Let me let me tell you another like thing that. we're working on. Yes. Um. Now, citysaver.org. If if people want to go look at it, citysaver.org. They can click. There's two cities, Liberty and Excelsior Springs, are the two places we do ministry. That we built a sort of a sample of. Uh, it would have local advertising local information, local business listings, church listings, all that kind of stuff. And it could be customizable for every city everywhere. And the Lord said, price is so cheap, nobody can say no. So I could go to a plumber and say, look, it's 10 bucks. Guaranteed eyeballs in in your delivery area, your service area, 10 bucks a month. Uh, okay, you know, why wouldn't you? Super cheap. I, I used to do banner advertising and pay-per-click advertising for my business. And a guy called me one time says, I can guarantee you 20,000 clicks a month for $200. And I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. So uh, we we watched. A couple weeks later, he comes in and he says, by my count, you've already got 20,000 clicks uh, that we sent you. And I said, uh, by my watch, I got 20,000 clicks from the same IP address in India <laughs> that you're paying some guy, you know, 25 cents an hour to just hit refresh on my site over and over and over, that ain't worth no money to me. It's had generated no sales. That's a scam. But if I can get real eyeballs from real customers in my service area, that's worth something, you know? Anyway, uh, there's all kind of ways the thing makes money. Uh, it's all meant to be part of the church, a nonprofit that generates funds, that creates jobs for independent contractors in every city everywhere to be the moderator, to sell local ads, to... Uh, other other component pieces of it that potentially make money and uh, eventually part of the vision is to build max five repeaters over the town that could create an intra web over the whole city like you would go to a hotel and you log into their screen to get onto their Wi-Fi in the hotel and so you would log on to City Saver and why wouldn't you want to it's the best source of information and check on your neighbors see what's going on and then from there you could get to the whole rest of the internet or in a situation where somebody hit the big red button on the internet, it would all shunt to a server in your town where your town could be hosted on that server with a backup generator or solar power or whatever. So at least you could have contact with each other through City Saver within that intraweb over the city. Um, now, that's one component of what he told us to build. Now, there's another thing which I've never talked about publicly. And I'm not sure the wisdom in even doing so, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Because <laughs> I believe the Lord's got it. There was a, a brother that was here that was an Air Force intelligence officer that interrogated suspects in Abu Ghraib and uh, down in Cuba. And I told him about it, and he said, I work a lot with the NSA, and they will kill you. This is exactly not the kind of stuff they want, and they will be very unhappy uh, about this and I said well I don't know what to tell you it's what the Lord told us to do um, I was talking to uh, you and I are about the same age and I remember the world before the internet and the bulletin board used net before that yes 
and was about in college during all of that. Um, anyway, I was talking to a, a guy about our age that was is a Unix programmer. And high level, very qualified, knows knows his stuff. This was probably 16 years ago. I was talking to him, uh, and I said, we need a way to use Wi-Fi to send messages to one another that can't be hacked, can't be tracked, can't be stopped, and can get around everything. And uh, painted him a picture of, you know, the underground church in China and how we need to start thinking the way they think because it's really just a matter of time. Yes. And uh, he took the Usenet bulletin board system, mm. combined it with Wi-Fi technology, and created something he called Teotwaki, which is the end of the world as we know it. Yes. Which I call the Pony Express. And essentially, uh, uh, later on, we handed it off to another guy who's in Finland working on it, and uh, we're beta testing it now, but uh, essentially it's an app that you would install on your phone, and you would agree to be a carrier for a message. Yes. For somebody else. Yes. You don't know. You don't know who it is, and you don't know what's in the message, and it's all encrypted. But let's say I want to send you a message in Bali, and uh, so I write you out a text message. You know, essentially a tweet, something a couple hundred characters, not 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 sending video, not sending you know uh, pictures, just a, a a short text message like the bulletin board system would have been. And I I have you have an encrypted number, uh, a code, that's the only one that can open this message. Yes, uh, from me. So I hit send, and my phone starts looking for a receiver. And anybody with this app, I'm walking along, my phone goes beep, their phone goes beep, uh, they go to the mall, 20 phones go beep, they're in traffic, two lanes over, a phone goes beep, somebody goes to the airport, their phone goes beep, they're walking through the terminal, 50 phones go beep, somebody gets on a plane to Malaysia, their phones go beep, somebody gets on a plane to Bali, their phone goes beep, you're at the market, your phone goes beep, hey, I got a message from Doug. Uh, now, it might take a month to do that. It, it it might be God ordained, Holy Spirit divine appointments every step of the way. Yes, and you get it right away. I have no idea. It's chaos. It's chaos in a sort of theocracy, God ordained, God led chaos way, <laughs> which is no chaos at all because He knows exactly who where everybody is at the right moment. So uh, then you oh God, Doug sent me a message and you read it and uh, it deletes off. You know, after so much amount of time, it's trying to find somebody to replicate over this network, and then after so much time, it just deletes itself off and uh, clears that that cache and allows room for another message. You could do that. now. Go ahead. That's feasible. Now, while I yeah. was using yeah. bulletin boards, actually as early as '83, I didn't um, create my own BBS. It was called EarthNet data systems, or that data online, excuse me, to about 92. Uh, a year later, the World Wide Web was out. And I was using a thing called Wildcat BBS. And before the email came on board, we were using a system like that. And from the Wildcat BBS software, there was a module, I think it was using Usenet, and it would package it and send it to another bulletin board. And it would take a while, but within a week or two, it would get out there to whoever's email was set up in the system. Now, what's right. interesting is right now um, we're at a whole new level with the, the age of Bitcoin. There's a whole thing called Podcasting 2.0. Uh, Adam Curry is pushing and some others. And just as uh, there was file sharing with systems like Napster for music, people recording podcast, and where they've been censored on the main networks, there's a, uh, there's a file distribution system out there. It's a protocol, and it's very slow, but uh, parts of your podcast or your MP3 message, it could be your sermon, are stored on multiple systems around the world, and then it goes through this system. I can't articulate it very well tonight. But essentially, sure. some of that technology is out there. Also, people have asked, 
you know, how can I continue to transact in Bitcoin if the main web is shut down? And people are also using many, many satellite dishes, which are sending a burst that they can pull down the blockchain on their device and then update the blockchain. Right. Where am I going with this? Uh, these are all systems that would allow us to communicate off the main grid. You've hit paper. Right, right. The over scenario there. I described is if there is no internet and it's just got to bounce from one uh, tower uh, to the next Pony Express rider to another. As soon as somebody gets online, yes. then it could just shoot directly to you and bypass all of the stops along the way. But uh, are there any? If nobody got online, eventually it would find you anyway. Are there any mini transmitters people could set up around the world as like a node? And, and broadcast a Wi-Fi message? I'm just curious how far it would go. Well, you can send uh, digital packets through shortwave. Okay. So it, it's really just ones and zeros. And um, Ari, that's my dog, um, you, you um, we're doing more research on that and, and looking into how exactly that would work. But it's essentially like a fax, and and you could send a fax tone on a shortwave that would be then deciphered at the other end and converted back from uh, digital language to whatever message you needed to send. Um, there's there's no way that's private, but it could be still encrypted. Um, so depending on what's available, whether you've got uh, Wi-Fi for a limited basis, uh, or you got a phone that you can dial short out wave. or short wave. Yeah. You're talking about you would build your own transmitters and as long as you've got those strung along far enough, you can get the message at least to anybody in that network. Right, right. And and there's there's also like most every small town right now has a Wi Fi network that covers the whole city if you connect the routers that are sitting on everybody's desk already at their home. From my house, I can pick up at least seven or eight other Wi-Fi routers that are all locked, but they could set up guest privileges, uh, just like at a, a our, our thrift store is right next to a tractor supply warehouse thing, and they have a guest Wi-Fi, and then they have their private corporate Wi-Fi. And the guest one, you has an open screen, and you log on like at a hotel, and you can get oh, on their right. free Wi-Fi. That's right. Well, that free Wi-Fi could be used to bounce a signal from one end of a town to the other, using the routers that are already in place on people's, uh, you know, desk at home. Um, like an intranet. It just, yeah, and it just requires some cooperation, uh, but but it would be a way for everybody to give a little, and then be able to have uh, uh, to to bounce a signal from one end of town to the other through all of the guest Wi-Fi's. So there are certainly ways to do that without any real expensive new uh, tower over the town or uh, expensive hardware or whatever. But um, so you're saying you we know, could it, repurpose it might, some of the old technology yeah. like Usenet and put a system together? Yeah, well, I mean we're looking into all of that kind of stuff, and 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 of course I'm not an expert. I just have a vision. I'm the entrepreneur. Uh, that's trying to listen to the Lord and and implement some of the stuff that he's telling me we're going to need. But he's talked to me about banking reform, about insurance reform, about how funding for ministry would be different and all kinds of stuff. You know, imagine if we could cooperate. Okay, we've got all these ministries that have foreign missionaries and they have to send money for payroll but also for housing, for car, for tracks and Bibles, and whatever they send money over to this foreign country for. So they contact Citibank or one of the big banks, pay whatever the daily exchange rate is, plus a couple of points to transfer money to the bank account in wherever, Malaysia, Mexico, wherever, for this person. Well, what if it was one Christian bank? Uh, and I went to them and I said, look, you've, you're a billion-dollar bank with 18 branches in Nashville. You can instantly be a $16 billion bank if you let me transfer all the foreign mission money in Christianity through you and don't charge me the two points on it. Just charge me whatever the exchange rate is 
and you will benefit from the float that's going through your bank so you automatically look like you're a 16 times bigger bank you get better lending rates from the fed you look better on paper and all we've done is transfer in, in mass all of our foreign exchange money through this one this one bank instead of giving Citibank a, a profit on it that alone <laughs> on 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 uh, 16 billion dollars of foreign missions you know uh, saving two points we're talking about tripling the spending on missions in the 1040 window uh, in the most unevangelized part of the world uh, what if what if all of the ministries, uh, you know, if you when you join AARP, right, or tri- AAA, you get a discount on hotels because they negotiate with all these big companies. Hey, give our members <laughs> an extra ten percent or whatever. If you're Amazon, you can go to the to the post office and say, "I want such a good deal that you're going to lose money on everything I ship." You know, you can you can get fifty percent off rates with FedEx and UPS that everybody else pays because you're so big. That's right. But you know what? If all the if all the Christians came together, we're way bigger than Amazon. You know? Absolutely. And and then if if all the ministries came together and we said, "Okay, we're going to have one account. It's going to bill directly to you. Nobody's nobody's going to you're not going to have to pay somebody back. I'm not going to cover it for you. It'll bill to you, but you're under our discount code because we've negotiated such a, we've, we've negotiated an Amazon-like rate for you to send out your books, your flyers, your CDs to all of your constituents all over the world. You're it would save so much money that could be spent back into the kingdom. Pulling resources together. Absolutely. Almost like a super yeah. pack. Yeah. Uh, hey. Let me tell you something. This is the time right. to be working this system out because um, the clamps are coming down on free speech. We see that. Um, Europe has just yeah. outlawed any cash transactions over a thousand dollars. They say you're in the gray market if you you pay for anything with cash over a thousand dollars. That's why you know people run into crypto. You know they want to be in charge of their own money. They're tired of uh, seeing bank runs and bank freezes. You know, like it's happened in many countries. Um, ATMs are being pulled. Bank branches are being scaled back. They're going after our freedoms. Freedom of speech, yeah. freedom of commerce, freedom of communication. Of course, what happens when you're deplatformed? Like an Alex Jones. Uh, or better yet, yeah. Gab. They turned everything off. Even turned off his hosting platform. His merchant accounts. He had to basically take three years and create his own system and come back. And you know, they can do that because they're monopolies. You know, Amazon... And these other groups, Apple, they'll meet, and then you're deplatformed. Uh, we're talking about how to replatform and harness the power of the Christian community. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, for sure. And and those platforms don't really control the internet. It seems like everybody has to go through them, but you can use a search engine other than Google. True. And they don't really control the backbones. And so if somebody else came along, which is why they hate Twitter or X now. Yes. Um, because it looks like a threat to them, but they don't really control the backbone. So you could start a Usenet bulletin board type thing off to the side or any kind of website that you can host on a computer anywhere. Yes. And they can't take, they can't take your website down on your server, uh, w- on your own connection to a T3 or whatever somewhere. Right. So... Uh, there, there's. Uh, it's just that we have to have the momentum to do it, and for momentum, we have to be working together. And we're. It's it's such an unlikely, crazy thing. I, I mean, I have been. The warfare has been insane. Uh, there's whole. There, I've I've had a server on my, my desk with a city saver um, potential sort of built thing. Sometimes for two or three years and I stare at it and can't even turn it on the warfare so bad can't even you know like get to whatever the next step is the warfare has been so bad but finally just in the last year or so we've started to have some momentum and I believe 
it's going to take a, a team of, of professional programmers to build what I want to build, what God's told me to build. And that's going to take money or it's going to take some people that are that see the vision and say, you know what, I get it. I see what this could do to reach the world. I see what it could do to restore what the church has stolen. You know, I grew up in Mexico. My parents were missionaries and every little village has a five, six story cathedral crusted in gold built on the backs of peasants. It took two, three hundred years to build. Yes. With a Virgin Mary up front and a dead Jesus in a glass coffin in the back. And, uh, you know, how have how have evangelical Christians done any better? We've got giant, you know, the, the chandelier in First Baptist Dallas was a million dollars. They had a missions committee and nobody wanted to be on it. They had a chandelier committee and they had hundreds of people wanted to be on the committee. They ended up having to cut the roof open and drop it in with a crane. It was so big. They're wasting money. You know, somebody's on somebody's going to answer for that. Doug, um, a few years ago, I bought some time on uh, the former World Harvest shortwave stations on the island of Palau, out in Oceana. It's out between here and Australia, New Zealand. It's way out there in the ocean. And Lester Sumrall, uh, before he died, he had... Uh, bought three of these big transmitters there. He also has a big shortwave array in America. Well, some years ago, people basically said shortwave and went the way of the dinosaur. And, you know, uh, Voice of America stopped. Uh, Australia pulled all their funding. And, you know, after they'd been on these shortwave stations for decades, they just abandoned the frequencies, many of them. And lo and behold, the, the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, came in and they took over many of these former English-speaking shortwave channels. And they're broadcasting from China in English. What's that tell you? They see the importance yep. of shortwave. So another organization ends up buying them out a few years ago, the ones on Palau. And uh, they're about the only way to get a message into Korea. One of the transmitters uh, was broadcasting into Korea and would hit so- uh, North and South Korea. So... I hired a lady to read through the New Testament in Korean. She was in South Korea. And we begin to broadcast a half-hour program each week into uh, Pyongyang. Or at least try. We don't know if it got in there or not. But yeah. they block a lot of it. There's a lot of power outages. But, you know, literally look at North Korea. And that's a nation where there's only a few ways currently that you could get a message to them. Most time it's going to be by a person. And they risk their life going in and out. Maybe shortwave, maybe. If they got any power at all, that place is usually blackout mode out, if you get out of the main city. Right. Or people are flying USB sticks with hot air balloons over the border. And you look at yeah. China. Thousands of churches d- demolished during COVID. And people are meeting underground. Where am I going with this story? Correct me if I'm wrong. When Nero was, was ruling over there in Rome and persecution... Uh, took a fevered uptick and they were sending Christians to the gladiators and the stadiums to fight and feeding them to lions the church had to go underground didn't it and yeah. for them yeah. to survive they had to meet underground they had their you know special signs they would the codes and you know all that stuff that they would communicate with it's been no different in you know Romanian controlled, you know, communist Chesco controlled Romania, smuggling Bibles into these countries. There's parts of the globe right now you've got to still smuggle things in. Try to get a Bible into Iran. It's not easy. Um, yeah. Folks, what there's is a huge, There's a huge underground city in Ephesus. Uh, tremendous. Huge underground city. Running water, bathrooms, room for animals, everything uh, outside of Ephesus wow. that the Christians hid in uh, during the Ottoman uh, conquests and other times when the Muslims would have killed them all. Uh, later on, some of the Muslims lived in those same tunnels. Um, but uh, yeah, there's do do research on the tunnels of Ephesus and uh, thousands and thousands of Christians that lived underground there. What during, has happened uh, before? Certain periods. We're going to see again, like we talked about the other day. The enemy of the New World Order is every Christian believer out there. We're the ones that are sounding the alarm. Don't take the vax. You know, watch out for the mark. They've got to silence us. I've lost eight YouTube channels. Uh, 100,000 yeah, other people have too. 
Shannon, we're not going to see it again. We're going to see the worst time the world has ever seen. Yes. This this isn't. It's not going to be like those times. It's going to be worse than those times, like like never seen before. Um, pick 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 the worst of them: Jews in the Holocaust, or the, uh, Caligula, Nero, uh, the Inquisitions, p- p- whatever. Worse than those. This may encourage That's what you. we need to be thinking in terms of. Some years ago, before my grandmother died, a great woman of God had a bat phone to heaven. She'd pray. The Lord would hear. She would give a, a word in tongues, interpretation. God heard her prayer. She was a consecrated vessel to the Lord. She said something strange to me about 2011 before she died. She said, son, you need to look into another way to communicate. She didn't know how to articulate it. She said, I don't know if it's a short wave or a radio or what it is, but you need to look at another means of transmission when your main means goes down. Now, I throw that back over to you. Let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. God is showing you something, a plan and a strategy that we're going to need in these last days to communicate as they go after the church and try to splinter us up and segregate us and cut off our lines of communication. Back to you. There have been times, Shannon... I heard other Christians in my head, hmm. brothers and sisters that are that are here, that have prayed, poured into my cup, I poured into their cup, back and forth, laid hands on each other so many times. Um. Uh, and what I re- and I, I specifically remember the first time one of the sisters here, um, I had a thought and I heard her answer me, and I'm like, oh, that's a demon sounding like her and the Lord said no it's not and I'm like oh shoot I got enough voices in my head already I gotta take captive every thought and now I got Christians in my head not just you and the bad guys and he said it's filtered through me it's it's her spirit by my spirit talking to your spirit and it's okay and he said this is a taste of what's coming of what it's going to be like. Uh, it's a pretty regular thing. Somebody asked me, hey, can can you and your wife go to dinner with us tomorrow night? And she's off doing something else. And in my head, I'll ask her if she's free to go to dinner with them tomorrow night. And I hear, yes, honey, that'd be great. Now, when I ask her later, hey, did you hear me ask you if you could go to dinner tomorrow night? Uh, no, I didn't hear anything, but that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always lined up and it's always been true and I know it's not my imagination and it's happened lots of times and it's not whatever the enemy has is some cheap knockoff of whatever God has you know and uh, anyway it's, uh, th- there's I know that that's coming too I know that uh picking us up and plopping us down in another place theoportation is what the Lord had me call it sure uh, it's not it's not teleportation it's by God it's theoportation and uh, and I know that uh, I've had con- I've had conversations on the phone with somebody in tongues with them in tongues both of us getting the interpretation about just regular mundane details <laughs> how is the FBI or the NSA or somebody gonna <laughs> gonna do the deal with that you know, I haven't heard this. And, um, one. This isn't Navajo people. We've heard this one before. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's yeah. something to think about. Yeah, wind talkers, spirit talkers, encrypted tongues. So content. there's all kind of stuff. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look, I think I think the day's going to come where I have a website that tells everybody where to run to, where the food is, where we're hiding. But you got to know the 16 digit number to get onto it. Yeah. And you're just going to have to ask the Holy Spirit. And, and you're going to have to hear God good enough to get it right the first time, or, or it's going to cancel out and you can't get on it anymore, you know, wow. and or whatever. Uh, what, you know, this Bible verse, and you hear it in your head, you type it in, you get to find out where we are. Everybody else, you know, can't get on it, uh, or whatever. Or God just, we've had meetings where people just show up. I didn't even call a meeting. I just get up in the middle of the night, go sit in the living room, and five, six people come sit there. I'm like, why are you here? I don't know. God woke me up, said to come to the living room great let's have a prayer meeting you know it can work like that 
it should work like that. And when you have people that are really surrendered, listen to the Lord, uh, it will be like that. And this is what he's been doing here with us. And I know that I'm supposed to, it's not that I have to do it. It's not that I'm in charge of anything. It's just that he's given me vision about what it's going to take and the pieces component to, to make this work. Man, I'm And not, I'm just waiting. I've been well, waiting. This is of the Lord. You've got to get this thing done. We're just about, about a time, out of time. Uh, Doug, I want you to give out your contact information. How do people reach you in your ministry? How can they support it? And where can they uh, hear you broadcasting? It's uh, fellowshipofthemartyrs.com is the website. I've got eight, eight or nine books on there that are free for download, music that we've written, uh, articles, uh, links to um, our YouTube channel, which is FOTM1, the number one, FOTM number one. And um, about 2,000 videos on YouTube, uh, and I don't know, seven, eight million hits now. I've, I've lost track. And uh, but God has really suppressed us. I know that we've been in hiding for a long time. There's going to be a time. He he said we're going to take teams to Africa and Australia and all over the world, but not yet, not yet. And uh, and I know that there's things like citysaver.org if you want to go look at that citysaver.org one click away is citysavior.org where the body of Christ can come together um, have a calendar local events local share resources talk you know whatever and um, uh, I think I think I need I don't know half a million dollars maybe maybe a lot less if the people that have the know-how and we could build something that would radically change the bride change the understanding and expression of God and get it out of the boxes it was never supposed to be in. There is nothing in the Bible you can find that looks like church as we've been doing it. Um, there was no vision. pulpits. There was no guy standing up front while everybody else sits quietly. Something else has to come. And uh, anyway, uh, I love what you're doing. Uh, our email is ahead, FOTM at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com FOTM1 on YouTube. You can PayPal to FOTM at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com cash app to dollar sign FOTM1 uh, our Venmo, our Chime our whatever all the other stuff is on the website under how to help um, and, and we certainly could use the help, we're, we're just outside of Kansas City, right dead center in the middle of Babylon trying to uh, get ready for what's coming and uh, equip and prepare the bride for something different because he's it. not coming back for this mess this is not without wrinkle or spot uh, dressed in white, but uh, tribulation is going to have to get us there. We're going to have to. Doug, you just went mute for a second. You said anyway. We're have to, I. Um, we're, have, uh, he's not coming back for this this mess. Uh, this is not dressed in white without wrinkle or spot. The bride he's coming for is going to have to go through tribulation and uh, learn to love and share and resource. Um, or we're not going to be ready. Folks, we've got to get ready. Doug, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, what are you doing next week? I've got a Wednesday and Thursday open at uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Look at your schedule. Yeah, whatever. Let me know, let me know what you want. And yeah. We'll get you back on next week. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother, okay. Doug. Okay, bye-bye. God, God bless you. Great word. Bye-bye. Folks, it was Doug Perry. Let's get Tim Keyes on. Stand by. <laughs>